Harry Smith. Harry Smith. Harry Smith. In 1952, a creative and eccentric painter, philosopher, anthropologist, and political activist. I'm also an expert on black magic. Produced three albums of folk music, reissued from recordings made by major labels in the 1920s and 1930s. I'm going back The scholarship at work there. Harry Smith understood that there were certain traditions in American music. Anthology of American Folk Music on Folkways became the resource for a generation of young performers. Say, hey, there's a magician I know. I was introduced to Harry Smith, whom I knew not as a great ethnomusicologist, but as a filmmaker. The movies that he created were these tremendous, fierce works of art. He took all these different areas of interest and combined them into a study of life. He lived at Chelsea Hotel because he was very close to Allen Ginsberg and very often you know, I could smell what they were smoking. Boy, am I in trouble. Yeah. I'm uh, glad to say that I, my dreams came true, uh, that I saw America change through music. Because of all that Harry Smith knew, it really intrigued me where this, where this guy was from. His father was a caretaker for the Apex Cannery building. He and I were both uh, somewhat atypical junior high, high school age kids. Well, he was a rather fragile appearing person. He was quite slender and a little awkward. He was sort of a, uh, a loner. And I, I was very pleased to hear of his successes, and I wouldn't have doubted that he had abilities. But it was a surprise to learn just how far he had gone. Thank you. Thank you. How can a small town kid live to become famous everywhere underground? A shaman in residence for many profound cultural accomplishments while remaining unknown or forgotten in the places he grew up. I didn't realize how far a little shit can go. He was small. He walked a humped older over and would swagger just a little bit, but he would never look you right in the eye. Do you want me to tell you what I thought? Well, I thought he was a nerd. I thought he had something wrong with him. And I felt that most of us thought that he was not a normal person. We were in the same class, and I was always friendly with Harry, but we didn't have too many interests together. It impressed me how well read Harry was. He got into a subject that he had chosen. It could go on and on, I mean, real deep. And I was amazed that when I saw our class picture, that he was a part of it. And I do not remember him at high school. And he had created a museum in, the, in one of the offices of the old Apex Cannery. And so he took me down to see it. And here he had bird's nests and feathers and agates and everything all neatly arranged around. But I was impressed that, that his, with his and the meticulousness of the collection. What effect, if any, did Anacortes have on the development of Harry Smith. This place has a way of articulating its windy beauty and deep currents through those who call it home. 19th century newcomers tried to turn the people of the salmon into sharecroppers for Uncle Sam. Yet the vibrant roots of Coast Salish cultures was just below the surface in Harry's youth. He knew a lot about it, uh, Native Americans and I knew that he was interested in the group in Guimas. He and I drove over to uh, one of the potlatch uh, celebrations. We had rigged up a uh, disc recorder. The one thing I remember is smoke getting in our eyes and so on because they, they had uh, fire raging and so on. The smoke would drop through the hole in the, uh, the potlatch building. I think they were trying to commune with uh, spirits, trying to contact with them. When you're that age, you don't know, quite understand why is someone different than somebody else. I cannot believe it. And looking at the pictures of him as this little old man, long hair and beard, I thought, how can he be that man? Well, now looking back, I think Harry uh, 
was something of a genius, and that's one of the reasons he seemed to be so different from the others. Things are not always simple. Sincere to yours, uh, Harry Smith.